Hi everybody, it's Adam with HeartValveSurgery.com and today we are at the Heart Valve Society Conference in Abu Dhabi. We're answering your questions that you submitted at Facebook and HeartValveSurgery.com and I am thrilled to be here with Dr. Jim Thomas from Northwestern Medicine. Good and, to see you, Adam. Yeah, good to see you again. Maybe you can share with our community, Jim, what you do at Northwestern Medicine. Okay, well, I am a uh, non-invasive cardiologist by, by training, echocardiographer, and um, head up the uh, Center for Heart Valve Disease at Northwestern. So we have a very big and growing program for surgical treatment of MR, medical treatment, interventional treatment, and uh, all the diagnostic tools, and we're, we're doing a lot of interesting research on that. So. Uh, uh, it's really an exciting time to be in the heart valve space. Yeah, and if I understand something right about you, Jim, uh, in your background, you've worked for NASA in the past. Is that yes, true? Yes, yes. Well, not for them, but with them. Okay. And they, what did you do? What did you do with them? I was. Uh, I had the opportunity in the late '90s to help the uh, engineers down at Johnson Space Center prepare the an echo machine for launch to the space station, and then we've been doing some research with that equipment since then to see the effects of the uh, uh, of weightlessness on the heart. Wow, fantastic. Well, as you know, we are answering patient questions mm -hmm. and you can see here we got bunches and bunches of questions yes. that came in. Um, thought this would be a good question from you and it comes okay. from Charlie. He says, I had heart valve surgery with a cow valve about four years ago. My mean gradient is 34 and peak velocity is 3.9. I may be headed for another valve replacement soon. How common is it that a valve would only last four to five years? And his follow-up question is, if I get the valve replaced, is it likely to only last this long for a second time? Well, Charlie, that's an excellent question. I, and uh, I'm sorry to hear that you've had uh, sort of a short run with this particular valve. Uh, there are a couple of scenarios that could be going on here. Uh, sometimes uh, big people need big valves and when the surgeon goes in they're only able to get a relatively small valve in so the valve may be functioning perfectly well uh, but it is relatively small for your body and that's something called uh, patient prosthesis mismatch and if that's the case then um, uh, it may be that you can sort of put up with this uh, for a while longer, but if, if you do need a replacement, then the surgeon really needs to try to get a larger valve into you, and that may in, uh, involve enlarging the, the ring that the aortic valve goes into, uh, and uh, some other tools that the surgeon will have at his uh, disposal there. Um, if it is a case where the valve had a much lower gradient early on, and now it's got this higher gradient, you're exactly correct. It is very unusual for a valve to have this happen uh, in this short a period of time. There are some patients that almost seem like they have kind of a, an allergic or an immunologic reaction to the valve. And you'll see even within a year or two that that valve may become very calcified and not open as well. Um, it, is, it occurs so rarely that I think for your second question, there isn't good data that says uh, what's going to happen the next time around. I certainly have had patients who have been through your, your situation, have had the valve replaced, and then the second one did last much better. Um, so I, I wouldn't uh, despair of that. Uh, the other possibility is um, that uh, you had a surgical valve initially, but now it is very well established that we can put a catheter valve inside the old valve. And so you may not have to have repeat operation. Uh, the, the valve that would go inside is similar to the one that was placed surgically, but now it just goes in via a catheter. Now, the devil is in the details and your own care providers are going to have to go over all the options that are specifically available to you. Uh, you want to be able to get a big enough valve in there that it will do the job and then hope that it doesn't suffer any of this degeneration. Uh, and it should give you the, the usual 15 year life expectancy of these biological valves. Well, uh, Charlie, I hope that helped you. Dr. Thomas, do you have time for one more question? Because it's on this sure. topic of valve failure. Sure. And it comes in from Sylvia. And Sylvia asks, I have a mechanical aortic valve. Mm -hmm. I had open heart surgery 1.5 a year and a half ago due to congenital BAV. 
My question is, what are the most likely failures for this type of valve? And what are the symptoms of failure? For example, leakiness. Okay, so you've got a mechanical valve uh, in your aortic position. Most likely, the most common ones now are these uh, two tilting disc valves. And uh, the good news is that those valves do not wear out. So it's not like the cow valves or the pig valves that you can anticipate over a 15 or 20 year period. Most of them will deteriorate and either start leaking or obstruct. Uh, there are a number of these mechanical valves. I follow patients that had them put in in the late 70s. They've taken their Coumadin. They become uh, sort of one with their valve and uh, it has functioned perfectly well for, for 40 plus years. Now that isn't to say that they all behave like that. Maybe half of them get, get into this happy spot and they just last and last. Um, for the others, there are a few ways that they can fail. Uh, first of all, uh, you know you have to take a blood thinner to keep the uh, uh, blood clots from forming there. And every once in a while, if you don't take enough of the blood thinner, or sometimes even if you do, you can form a blood clot on that valve and it may cause one of the leaflets to not open normally there. And uh, I'm sure you've gotten used to the clicking of your valve sound. It probably annoyed you a lot when you first, uh, first had it in there and now you've sort of gotten used to it. Well now, if you ever hear that clicking noise go away, that's a very bad sign and you need to call your doctor right away or 911 because that implies that something is interfering with either opening or closing of that prosthesis there. The other areas that you need to be concerned about are um, uh, developing an infection on that valve and that would uh, uh, be something obviously a very serious complication. So it's very important when you go to see the dentist uh, that you take the recommended antibiotics uh, to prevent that from happening and then just have very good uh, oral hygiene and just pay particular attention to uh, you know, your own personal hygiene. If you have a, a sore on your arm or leg or something, get that seen by a doctor right away so you can get that treated. Um, other than that, you know, these valves do tend to last um, basically for the rest of your life and there's a, a chance you may not meet a cardiothoracic surgeon except socially after this. <laughs> well, Sylvia, I hope that helped you and Dr. Thomas, as always, I want to thank you and your entire team at Northwestern Medicine for everything you're doing with all the patients, including the patients at heartvalvesurgery.com. And thanks for taking the time to come all the way from Chicago to meet with me today. Yes. And be here at this conference and help educate and empower patients. We've met in many unusual venues, Adam, <laughs> and uh, this is another great one here. Yeah, and thanks we, so much. We always say, keep on ticking. <laughs>